want to consider now the ways that light or electromagnetic radiation is created. First thing we'll think about is accelerating charged particles. So if I take a charged particle like an electron and I shake it up and down, and it oscillates, that oscillating electric charge creates an oscillating electromagnetic field. And this is how you make radio waves. You might see, especially in the north of Canberra out towards Gungahlin, there are some large radio masts. Well, what's happening in these things is that you're pumping an oscillating current into the mast. It goes up and down and creates radio waves that radiate away from the mast. If you shake electrons really quickly, you can make visible light or even x-rays, but to do that you need something called a synchrotron, and it's just a really expensive machine that shakes electrons really quickly. And if you think about this way of creating electromagnetic radiation, it's very classical. You know, it's, it's, there's nothing quantum about this. You're moving an electric charge, which is changing, making an oscillating electric field. And this oscillating electric field is the electromagnetic radiation. Here's an animation that gives you some intuitive picture of why an oscillating charge creates an electromagnetic field. This is a stationary positive charge. The white lines here represent the field lines coming from this stationary charge. If I now set it in motion sinusoidally, we see we get these uh, oscillations coming off in the sideways direction. These are oscillating electric fields that come along with an oscillating magnetic field. And that's really simply electromagnetic radiation from an oscillating charge. A second way of making electromagnetic radiation is to drop electrons near the nucleus of an atom. So this is more of a quantum picture of how light is created. In atoms, the electron energy levels are quantized. There are certain allowed energy levels that the electrons can occupy. When an electron goes from a high energy state to a low energy state, the difference in energy is released as a photon and the photon emerges with the energy corresponding to the change in electron energy. A third way of doing it is kind of the same as moving electrons near the nucleus of an atom, but it's rather moving the contents of the nucleus around. So if you reconfigure the innards of an atomic nucleus, you can also release very high energy photons or gamma rays. So nuclear reactions, in other words, can release electromagnetic radiation. A fourth way of doing it would be antimatter-matter collision. So you take an electron and positron, smash them together, they annihilate, all that's left over is photons. So here's a little thing to ponder. When you heat something up, like this case it's uh, glass, it's very hot, when you heat something up to about a thousand degrees or hotter you start to see it glow. In this case of glowing glass, what process or processes create the light? What about the destruction of light or destruction of photons? So one of the really cool things about light is you can create and destroy it kind of at will. You don't have to get it to have any leftovers. There's no piles of dead photons. Once you finish using them, they're just created and destroyed. And when they're gone, they're completely annihilated and there's no trace of them in the universe anymore. Ways of destroying light, it's kind of all the inverse processes of the ways that light are created. So one way would be to use the photons, which contain uh, oscillating electric fields, use these oscillating electric fields to accelerate charged particles. And that means you're doing work on these charged particles to accelerate them up and down, and that absorbs the energy of the electromagnetic waves, or the photons. So the electric field shakes the electrons, and these, these shaking electrons can re-radiate the light, or the motion of the electrons can bump into other particles and convert the light into increased temperature of the absorber. So in that way, the uh, Incoming photons or electromagnetic radiation can be converted into the temperature of the absorber. A second way would be to raise electrons near the nucleus of an atom. What I mean by that is a photon comes into an atom and interacts with an electron, and that electron is raised to a higher energy level, and the photon is then gone. So this is the opposite of light being created by an electron dropping an energy level in an atom. A third way would be nuclear absorption, for example, the Merzbauer effect. And it's the same sort of thing. A very high energy photon, in this case, to interact with the nucleus would come in and excite the nucleus to a high energy state. And a final way of annihilating photons would be direct photon-photon collisions. Now this is something which is hypothesized to be possible, but has never been demonstrated in the laboratory environment. But if you can have an electron-anti-electron pair annihilating to create photons, the inverse process, in theory, 
can also exist, but you need to have very, very high energy photons for this to happen.